All right, the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to take off the VTEC solenoid on the back of the head. So this is VTEC equipped. Yeah. VTEC just kicked in, bro. This is where the magic happens. Sure, when you take these out, it's a things different sized. They go back where they belong. And those three appear to be the same. Pull that off there. There's um, a gasket in here that you want to keep up with. Sure, to, I, I replaced this one not too long ago, but um, you get that off. You want to inspect it and make sure that it's still round where it's supposed to be round and not flat. This will be cleaned up later. Basically, it's just a oil passages that goes through here as oil pressure goes up, solenoid kicks on and opens up the VTEC. Since you're on the back, tells the computer that the VTEC is, is engaging when it's supposed to be, or you get a check engine code. There is a filter on the back of this. You want to inspect it and make sure it's clean inside and out. That would get clogged up and would interfere with the VTEC operation. On the front of this, we have the water temp sen sensor. It's got plastic on the front. These are easy to break. Go ahead and get those off before you go any further. Deep dish 19 to go over that. It's like pizza, right? Deep well. There you go. You got your water deck on the front that's also made out of plastic. You're trying to flip this thing around, it can get in the way. Get that off at 12. you have that little clip there part of the wiring harness that comes through I'll take this out I'll just put that all back together like I found it store it that way so I'll know that's how it goes little o-ring type gasket there we'll check on I'm sure I'll have one of those in my kit All right, the next step is going to get the valve springs out of the engine. It's a total of 16 valves, 16 springs, four per cylinder. What we have to do, have to take these seats out of, these keepers out of the top of the valve seat that clamp onto the valve stem. Honda has a specific tool, I think, that you can buy, probably aftermarket as well, for this particular head. I have a tool to get those out, not the tool, but it will work. Show you what I have. All right, before I get any further on this, I'm going to go ahead and give it a good clean. Every time I touch this thing, I wind up with grease everywhere. So I'm going to use the uh, Purple Power, my pressure sprayer. Put that hose down. Let that dry off. 
All right, we're back inside with the head now. See, I got most of the oil and crusties knocked off of it. So that way now every time I touch it, I'm not going to get my hands covered in grease. This is not a hot wash, but this is not a racing or show engine. It just has to be good enough for me. I've already taken a couple of the valve sp springs off just to make sure I was familiar with the tool before I showed you what I was going, what I had going on here. Um, this is the tool that I'm using. This is like for small engines, motorcycles, things like that. Um, it works really well. This piece right here compresses down onto the valve uh, re uh, stem retainer or the retainer on the top, pushes it down and allows you a window here to get into where the um, valve stem keepers are at. This part on the back butts up against the valve to prevent it from opening. So I'm going to get this clamped on and I'm going to show you how it works and how I'm going to get those out. Alright, this is the tool actually on the engine. It's kind of hard to do that with one hand. So, As you can see we have the piece that fits just over that particular valve retainer on the top. And again on the back, and then you can see the piece butts up against the valve. So that way when I'm squishing on this end I'm not forcing that valve down like it's supposed to work. So, turn this, the stem compress, or the, presses the spring down and frees those keepers. And once I get a good bit, a good bit down there, I'm going to go in here with a magnet and voila, grab my keepers. So you get the picture. I'm going to go ahead and take the exhaust side out and I'm going to show you how I'm going to keep up with everything. Alright, I've got all the exhaust valves out now. Um, I'm going to show you how I keep up with everything. First of all, I use a magnetic tray. To keep up with these things, the keepers, you can see how small they are. One of those goes flying across the room, good luck finding that. They're kind of hard to come by with. If you go to a junkyard, you kind of have trouble getting them back out of the engine that, in that situation. You go to the parts store, it's like five or six dollars a piece for one of those little things. <clears throat> so I'm going to reuse the same valves that I took out of this engine. And what I'm going to do is put them on a, a wire wheel. I'll show you that here in a minute. But to keep up to make sure I put the valve back in the same place I took it out, this is what I do. All right, I give me a box. I put holes in it, labeled towards the front of the engine. This particular engine, the exhaust side's down. The intake side's up, so I have an E here and an I here. I'm going to put more holes here. So as I take each one out, I put it in its corresponding place. And then when I go to work on these to clean them up, I take out one at a time and put them right back where I found them. That way it makes it easy to keep up with everything. Let's go ahead and get those intakes out. Okay, I'm finished getting all the valves out. Again, I showed you my little way of keeping up with everything. Take on top, exhaust on the bottom, point the front of the engine, so that way I know which one is which. <clears throat> a little more about this tool. It's um, you see it has different sizes here. This is the one that I use, and how that works is basically your spring here has this little retainer on the top, and that's a certain size, and it fits in that just right. So that's how that works. Next, also um. I kept my intake and exhaust spring separate. I don't know that it matters on this engine, but I'm not going to take a chance. I just I want to make sure everything goes back the way it came out so I don't have any issues down the road. Uh, my next step here is going to be to get the <clears throat> valve seals out. This is what prevents the oil from getting down into your combustion chamber while the, the valves are going up and down. When these go bad, that's when you like to see an engine that's smoking. Oh, it's got bad rigs. It's most likely it's these valve seals. Um, sometimes you can just grab them with a pair of pliers, pull them right off. If that doesn't work, we're going to put a little heat on them and see. I mean, actually catch them on fire, burn them with map gas, and they pull right out. Stinks to high heaven, but it does a good job. So let's get try to take at least one out see where we're at. Alright, this first guy right here, I gave him a couple of wiggles and pulls with the uh, pliers. I got him to move a little bit, but the problem is is that you have beneath these are your valve guides. If something happens to one of those, you booger one of those up, that's a trip to the machine shop. Um, but technically, if you're doing a, a really good 
head job on any engine, you want these things replaced. The underneath these seals are the guides. They have precision tools that take those out, press new ones in, and make sure they're exactly right. They're very expensive. This is a 2000 Honda Accord. I'm not spending the money on that. I've done this before. I have not had any issues. So what we're going to have to try to do, make sure we don't mess anything up, we're going to go with the map gas. Burn the ends of these. They're rubber and there's a spring in there. Once they get gooey, then you're going to get the pliers and pull them out. Just drop them on the floor. It's going to be nasty. Uh, don't get too carried away with the map gas. This is aluminum. You don't want anything to get bent, melted, torched. There you go. Just like that. I would not put any more heat on it than I just did. Just enough to get that rubber burnt that's inside there and then it's going to let go. Of course, after you get done with all these, you need to go back and get all that out. You don't want any of that getting back into your oil. Sorry for the wiggly camera. It's kind of hard to do with two hands. Let's see if I can't get one more for you. There you go. Who that smells. Voila. There it is. All right. Instead of trying to do this one-handed, I'm going to put the camera down. I'll come back when we're finished. Okay, I've gotten all those out. I'm going to show you kind of what I had going on. This is a valve seal. And up at the top, it's, it's rubber in there. So what I'm doing, A, I'm melting that rubber there. And then around that little lip that's at the top is a spring. See on the end of my magnet there. So when you heat those up, those springs will break and pop and they let go and it makes it much easier to get that out. But like you see, you see where they burn and pop, they leave a mess down in the bottom. So you need to make sure to get all of that out as well. Um, since we're going to be flipping this over and moving it around, you also want to take the bottom of the valve, the seat at the bottom. Um, I've looked at the, what I already have. These are not the same as the top one, so I would not get those mixed up. So, uh, again, once I start flipping this around, these are going to fall off and pop off. And plus, I want to go over this again really good with some brake cleaner to get all that out of it. So, let me get all those pulled out. Alright, well, this looks like a good place to stop this video. I've kind of gotten a little ahead of myself. Uh, the next step is going to be to get the combustion chambers cleaned up. I've already got started on one, as you can see. Get the valves on the wire wheel, get all the crust off of them. So the exhaust ones are the main ones, the intake not so much, kind of just hit those. To get that done, get those back into the uh, head, show you the process of lapping the valves into the um, cylinder head and their seats here. Flip it over, get the rocker arm assembly back on, test it for leaks, show you how that's done. If you like this uh, series so far, please be sure to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you on that. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to leave you with some of the wildlife out in my backyard. Thank you for watching. Take a place to lay eggs. Come on.